When researching for my video about why popular celebrities go broke, I was searching through Pacer to find bankruptcy filings. Every single person I searched, I saw a Riches vs. Celebrity lawsuit. Riches vs. Lindsay Lohan. Riches vs. 50 Cent. Riches vs. Bill Belichick. I was so confused. What is this? I noticed in the two or three lawsuits I clicked on that they would all get dismissed immediately. I thought this was odd, so I Google searched the plaintiff's name. The most litigious man in America. I need to make a video on this. On January 25th, 2016, Jonathan mailed in his lawsuit to the Northern District of Iowa Court. We're playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? There are four options on the screen. Who did Jonathan Lee Riches sue? A. Islam. B. His neighbor. C. Thanksgiving. Or D. Bitcoin. He sued Bitcoin and Satoshi Nakamoto. If you guess D, you are the winner. The other options won't seem as crazy once you watch this entire video. Riches filed a temporary restraining order to stop Bitcoin from circulating as currency because it's going to crash soon and many Americans, worldwide citizens, and residents of Iowa will lose their life savings. He was correct that a crash was imminent, but his timing was a little off. When he filed the lawsuit, you could buy Bitcoin for $375. Regardless of what you think about Bitcoin, buying at $375 a coin would have been a great investment. Bitcoin is going to destroy humanity. Bitcoin is a complete scam. I think it's fair to assume that Riches is not in favor of Bitcoin surviving the cold winter. In the next sentence, he's referring to Satoshi Nakamoto and the other defendant, Marty Malmi. I observed both dancing at Bohemian Grove. The sheeple are following the trends. New World Order and Illuminati crooks have secretly paid alternative media hosts and mainstream conspiracy theorists like so-and-so, and he goes on to state that he feels unsafe. He gets nightmares of Bitcoin, so the Bitcoin concept is false advertising. Many other people have been having nightmares about Bitcoin too. All the people who heard about their neighbor buying Bitcoin or followed some guy on YouTube named Moon Carl and they bought in at $60,000 a coin and lost their shirt. They have definitely been having nightmares. Investment talk, has your portfolio ever been more risky? Stocks are down left and right. Bitcoin is back at 20K and now nearly 70% of economists surveyed by the Financial Times are predicting a full-on recession in 2023. I told you about them last month and thousands of you answered the call. I'm talking about Masterworks. Masterworks lets you diversify your portfolio with fine art for a fraction of the full cost and is backed by the SEC. And after my last video, you guys went nuts. They sent me the stats. We've invested tens of thousands into paintings by Banksy, Basquiat, and Picasso. The same kind of art that a New York Times interview recently called Bulletproof. Contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 total return by more than double for the last 25 years. And that's during a bull market, no less. It also has an annual appreciation rate of 13.8% over that same period. Masterworks even manages to beat that, having delivered an unbelievable 25% net returns for the last four years in a row through COVID, a bear market, and scathing inflation. Now, legally, I have to add past performance is no guarantee of future results, but it's no wonder they're already valued at $1 billion and nearly 500,000 users. My viewers are actually getting priority access to Skip Masterworks' waitlist. And if you have a portfolio over $50,000, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with a registered investment advisor. Just click the special link in the description to get VIP access. Back to the video. I am a whistleblower. We must go back to gold. Now that you've had a little taste of what this whistleblower likes to put in his lawsuits, it's time we ramp up the entertainment and look at his lawsuit against Donald Trump. In March 2016, before Trump became president, Jonathan wanted it all to be stopped. I support Donald 100%, but I'm scared some evil person will assassinate him or hurt him badly. Violent protests are erupting at his rallies. Jonathan didn't have his way because Trump ultimately became president, but the only time Trump was hurt was when he'd wake up and see his approval rating. He will, in fact, make America great again, but the risk is too high. And if someone hurts Trump in any way, I will be an emotional mess. Our economy will tank. The only real threat to Trump was his diet. How he's still alive from his daily regimen of fast food, soda, and hypertension defies my understanding of the human body. Trump needs to suspend his campaigns and announce to the U.S people he no longer is running for president and pass the reins to a more moderate, less fiery president like John McCain. There's definitely a percentage of people watching this video who wish Jonathan's lawsuits would have succeeded in stopping Bitcoin from existing and Trump from becoming president. I love him. The thought of Trump making our great nation great again gives me goosebumps and happy anxiety, but I did a cost-benefit analysis and it's too risky. Poor Jonathan must have been a nervous wreck during Trump's presidency if he was feeling happy anxiety during the campaigns. Given that Jonathan is really patriotic, he should know that there's nothing more American than popping a pill to solve his anxiety issue. So under the search for Jonathan Lee Riches, uh, under federal, 4,353 hits. Under state cases, 9,393 hits. 
So, a substantial amount. We've got OJ, Usher, <laughs> Elvis Presley getting sued. <laughs> yeah, poor Elvis. <laughs> he also sued Valentine's Day in the District of Montana. Valentine's Day offends me and promotes a religion under federal jurisdiction. I absolutely love this lawsuit because I think Valentine's Day has to be the dumbest day in American history. I seek a restraining order against the commercialization of Valentine's Day anywhere in America, including a ban on print, TV, online, in-store marketing, and advertising. I am offended, humiliated, and suffering emotional distress. It's okay, Jonathan, a lot of guys feel emotional distress on Valentine's Day. That's the billion dollars of marketing from corporations making you feel a certain way. It has the same effect on every guy eating in a restaurant on February 14th. Next up is Allen Iverson, which is a lawsuit for a more mature audience. He called it the Mile High SH. I have to abbreviate because the, um, the YouTube algorithm is tough on those words. This lawsuit was filed in the District of Colorado in 2007, when Iverson was playing for the Denver Nuggets. Plaintiff Jonathan was a personal trainer for Allen Iverson from November 1999 until December 2002. Plaintiff and Iverson have also been involved in a sexual relationship from December 2002 through April 2007. I don't think you all are ready for this story. It gets a little homoerotic, but first we need to know how they met. Jonathan alleges he met Allen at a gas station while he was dribbling a basketball without his shirt on, and Iverson was so impressed that he hired Jonathan on the spot at a $250,000 a year salary to be his trainer. Without his shirt on is definitely the best part of that story. This sounds like something a YouTuber would have added to the title of their video back in 2015. Baking cookies without a shirt on, gone sexual, in the hood. Around March 2020, while at a workout session at Iverson's mansion, our workouts turned into something more serious. While Iverson was chasing me on his basketball court, my pants fell down accidentally. Ladies, I want you to find a man who writes erotic stories like Jonathan does. Iverson then told me I was cute for a white boy and he told me he was bisexual, but don't tell anyone or I will fire you. For those who can't pick up sarcasm or social cues, obviously none of this happened. It's a story Jonathan made up and wrote in a lawsuit. Iverson then asked me if I ever kissed a black man and if I wanted to try it. I told him no, but Iverson pulled out a wad of cash from his pocket and offered me $2,000 to kiss him. Jonathan claims he needed the money because he just had a hair transplant, but what he really needed was a financial advisor. Alan went broke, so I guess his reckless spending was wearing off on Jonathan. For the next few years, Jonathan and Iverson had a very personal relationship that no one knew about, which even included them calling each other by nicknames. Iverson would call me his white juicy fruit and Johnny sweet cheeks. This is like the fifth time I've read this lawsuit, and I can't stop laughing every single time I read white juicy fruit and Johnny sweet cheeks. He's the best author of our time. He was even acknowledged by the Guinness World Book of records for filing the world's most lawsuits. After that, Riches sued Guinness. Jonathan was upset that Guinness got the tally wrong, so he decided to sue the Guinness Book of World Records for being the most litigious individual in history. Very fitting outcome. So he's taking up time from the court system. Yep. Yep. He's taking a lot of time and resources from the, from the court system. And by the way, they can't, the judges can't look at this and say this is BS, right? Because think about it. We want, even if you can't afford to have a, an attorney, we want you to at least be able to have the ability to say something to the court and have somebody look at it and, and not just kind of blow it off. So, unfortunately, on the other end of that, we actually have to spend time and resources dealing with these sorts of things. You're probably wondering why he's mailing in these lawsuits. He was bored in jail. He was serving 125 months for wire fraud and his ability to write fantasy stories rivals only Mike G. If you haven't seen that video or series, I'd recommend watching it after you watch this. Here's the lawsuit against Bill Belichick, Randy Moss, and Tom Brady. Jonathan alleges that Bill has been in a conspiracy with a Los Angeles spy to record the residence of Roger Goodell. Belichick told me, I'm going to blackmail Roger Goodell, make him resign, then take over to be commissioner. Belichick told me when I become commissioner, I'll let any player take steroids. As a huge sports fan, his lawsuits involving athletes are the absolute best. He then goes on to claim that Bill Belichick is actually the father to Tom Brady's child. Belichick is a peeping Tom Brady. He has secret wiretaps of every starting quarterback in the NFL from their homes. Belichick asked me once to sit in a van across the street of quarterback Chad Pennington of the Jets house and record his every move. In this lawsuit, Jonathan did not mention if he was shirtless in the van. I'm sure Patriots fans aren't too happy with Jonathan insinuating that Bill was cheating. I'm terrified of Belichick. He told me if I exposed his illegal wiretaps that he would get the owner of the Patriots, Mr. Kraft, who owns Kraft Foods, to put poison in the Kraft cheese I eat at prison. I'd love to create a YouTube channel full of skit comedy based on his writings and lawsuits. Jonathan has the ability to interweave fantasy, reality, jokes, and bizarre storytelling so seamlessly together. 
From his Wikipedia page, Riches attempted to intervene as a plaintiff in the Madoff investment scandal, claiming that he met Bernard Madoff on eHarmony.com in 2001 and taught Madoff identity theft skills. When I was reading through his lawsuits for the first time, they seemed to be the ramblings of a madman, but then I started to really enjoy the humor, thinking it was all an elaborate joke, but then he had another run-in with the law. In July 2018, Riches was indicted by a federal grand jury in Arizona. He is charged with making false statements and other frauds after an attempt to file a lawsuit against Gabby Giffords while posing as Jared Lee Loeffner. After spending a few hours reading through many of his lawsuits, I'm still undecided on Riches being a comic trying to bide his time in jail by self-entertainment or a deranged lunatic fraudster. In the Barry Bonds lawsuit, he alleges that Bud Selig was giving steroids to Bonds for years to boost TV ratings. They would meet at a specific steak and shake in booth number 11, so Jonathan placed a bug in booth number 10. He alleges the price for steroids was $22,000. These stories are hilarious to me. He seemed to take a news story, turn it into a fictitious story involving him, and then turn the story into a lawsuit. I found many of them to be really, really funny. But then there's the other side of the coin where he's completely defaming someone and claiming to have romantic relationships with people. He sued Kim Kardashian, Jesse James, and Sandra Bullock. If you know what Kim Kardashian got famous for, then you can probably guess what this lawsuit is about. The plot to these stories is so absurd. They're funny, but also delusional and odd but it does make you want to read more. He was also a criminal who committed fraud and stole money from his identity theft victims. Jonathan Lee Riches helped develop the identity theft technique known as phishing. He was in his mid-20s living in Florida and collaborating with teenage chatroom acquaintances in Texas who used spam emails to trick victims into disclosing personal information. Riches' role was to monetize the data, which he accomplished by seamlessly navigating the online and offline worlds. The story further states that his group stole $1.4 million from over 2,000 accounts by walking into banks and withdrawing money from the victim's accounts. Okay, a TRO, a temporary restraining order, is basically you're telling the court, hey listen, we want to stop some sort of behavior, and so if you're able to get it, and it's hard to get, and the, the standard for it is, we're probably going to win our ultimate lawsuit, the court will grant it for about 14 days, then say come back on the 15th day, we can extend it to a preliminary injunction, which is now you're a stopping, you're stopping the person from this behavior for the uh, duration of the lawsuit. And then if you actually win the lawsuit, now that preliminary injunction becomes a permanent injunction, which says, don't do this ever again. His lawsuits are entertaining to read. I was legitimately laughing hysterically at some of them. I look for interesting, and this story certainly was. Hopefully he doesn't sue me for making this video. Thanks for watching.